Mm, okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I am Nitika Manchanda. I, on behalf of ICSIIP, welcome you all in today's interactive meet. Let's connect. Through this new initiative, we are trying we are trying to have a connection between all our insolvency professionals. Every month, we endeavor to have to give the insolvency professionals a platform to discuss various issues related to IBC. They can discuss latest amendments, latest orders, anything which they like. It is a freehand platform which we have given to insolvency professionals every month. So this is our second Let's Connect session. The first session was held last month where the topic was Know Your IPA. Now, the today the topic is managing the corporate data as a going concern. So for we have Mr. Ravi Prakash Ganti, sir, for the moderation of this session. As we all know, Mr. Ravi Prakash Ganti, sir, he is the founder director of Resolve International Private Limited. He has a corporate experience of more than 35 years and uh, he, he is an insolvency professional and he's into the practice for last like five or six years. And he is currently the liquidator of group of nine CDs in real estate sector. And he is an advisor in various matters. Over to you, sir. You can take the session forward. Yeah. Thank you, Anitika. Thank you very much. Welcome to all the participants. Uh, second session today, the topic has been chosen based on the feedback that we received uh, in the first session yes. when a number of participants wanted this topic to be covered. Uh, we will be following a uh, interactive town hall type of uh, uh, structure, which means that from my side, I'll be basically moderating, not really giving any lecture or making any presentation. However, I will put up on the screen different issues that we have uh, noted down over a period of time based on our interactions with various IPs uh, in various platforms as to what are the challenges that they face during the uh, CIRP phase when managing the corporate data as a going concern. So we will uh, initially stick to uh, the issue that is on the screen that is being discussed so that anybody can uh, raise a question about it. Anyone can answer it, okay. Not that only uh, panel or there's no panel as such. We are just, there's a moderator. It's a, it's like, um, what do you say? We discuss together. It's more like a round table where we all talk to each other. Uh, We're doing it uh, virtually as of now, and probably we'll start doing it physically in the months to come. Uh, so uh, at any point of time, anybody can chip in, raise a question, give a clarification, uh, share an experience okay, of something similar which they have faced in their assignment. And maybe they have been able to overcome it. Maybe they have not been able to overcome it to their own satisfaction. Whatever it is, all views are welcome. Let me just share the thing that we have. Okay, so this is what we are here today, and uh, there are uh, 12 specific issues that we have identified, which we'll be showing on the screen one by one and discussing that. And then at the end, uh, we will try pick up those issues which have not been covered till then. Okay. Uh, yeah, the first issue, it, this is in broad terms, right? Uh, that one faces as an IP. When you get an assignment, you're appointed as the IRP and almost on day one uh, and even sometimes going into weeks and months thereafter is establishing contact and communication with the key persons of the corporate debt. Okay, this is what is our feedback, what we have heard from different people. Of course, there are various ways of overcoming this situation and I'm sure different IPs have evolve different methods of doing so. So the topic on the floor for discussion is the issue relating with establishing contact and communication with the key persons of the corporate data.
Yes, please chip in, okay? There is nothing much to say from our side. We want to hear. Uh, in fact, everybody else would like to hear from others. What Have they faced such an issue? Is that a major issue? If so, how they have been able to solve it? If not, what are the challenges that they faced? Yeah. And keep yeah, us... Really, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Jain. Yeah, yeah. So normally in a going concern, that is not an issue, but where is it in one of my cases, it was closed. So the promoter was funding, the office was closed. And uh, in fact, I could not locate anybody for three months. <laughs> then I filed a FIR, but uh, anyway, nothing happened. So okay. I filed in the NCLT and accordingly the company got dissolved. So okay. I was not able to locate the promoter, anybody of the company and the office was closed. So I had a practical example like that. Yeah. So you are talking of an issue where it was not a going concern. No business was going on. Yeah. And yeah. nobody could be contacted. They were all absconding one way or the other. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. You had no choice but to apply for dissolution. Yes. Yeah. I'm also having a situation huh. wherein the promoters are in jail. Okay. Uh -huh. and this is a kind of real estate project. Okay. So and uh, all the records are taken over by the taken by the ED. Now, a very serious situation again in front of me, <laughs> what to do? Yeah, so in your case, uh, the people with whom you need to have contact with, they are, they are not reachable because they are in jail, obviously. Yes. And all the company records, which again you need to carry the process forward, they are with the, the investigative agencies, whatever yes. be it. In your case, it's the ED maybe. Yes, yes. And so what do you do? What did you try to do? And can you share your experience? Yeah, I try to contact promoters through uh, the links. I met one of the promoter in the in the court when he was appearing for the uh, appearing in the court. So I had a brief talk with him. He said we'll we'll totally we'll give you total uh, cooperation. But after that, the same position is there. Okay, so this was an informal contact that you had. Uh... Yeah, it was an informal contact. Okay. Uh, did you uh, get any advice as to whether you could have a, establish a formal contact with somebody in jail? See, I I wrote them uh, letters, the email which I was having. Plus, I think you are talking about uh, to meet to meet him in jail. Yeah, because if the person is in jail, such a person would probably not have access to uh, a means of communication. And they would be very restricted, even if they have. They may not be allowed to, you know, access their email, their mo mobile phone. There are, there are lots of cases uh, going on against him, who is the main promoter. And uh, you know, appearance are regular in the courts, uh, local courts. So, yeah, in my when, opinion, by when taking an the accused, time, when an my, yeah. yeah, when an accused appears in court, uh, suppose. That person is actually not supposed to speak to anybody else. So sir, they have, sir. I tell you, they have a very good setting. Oh, okay. We will that, not that, talk of. That, see, Nini, I, I tell you, I tell you, sir. I tell you, uh, Ravi, sir. I tell you, that fellow was sitting with me for more than more than one hour. Oh, okay. So we we in this platform we can't uh, de definitely not uh, discuss such uh, possibilities which are not strictly legal. Let us see what are the legal options available in such a situation. Yes. I'm sure there are some lawyers in this uh, today's participants. Can anybody uh, you know, throw some light on what are the options available to an RP when the key people are in jail? He is supposed to visit to the jail and uh, there is uh, some uh, days fixed for, for their proper meeting. Now they have to pay and uh, he, uh, when he go to the jail, there is a process. Yeah, I want to meet that, that fellow. So then uh, some message will go to the inside to the court to the, to the jail uh, to prisoner. So then it is depend on him. He want to meet or not. That is also conditional on it, sir. Mm hmm Yes. 
and it may take it may take a uh, lot lo of time time per se uh, when we have the option of meeting after some time and no meeting at all uh, i am sure meeting after some time whatever time it takes would be preferred if if it is required obviously but what do you think you know this, this is not a isolated instance not there are there are too many of them but in all the cases that are currently ongoing there are at least 20 odd if not more where key people are in jail right so how do you if you def, if you do need some information from them how do you approach them what do you say sir i will come to that later i <laughs> will <Well, laughs> like, like to hear from uh, the audience uh, yeah. what they think uh, especially those with a legal background they might be able to throw some light on that i believe that ki the action should be taken from a Uh, access should be taken from the AA. Yeah, and uh, okay. depend upon the issues. What type of issues being faced by the RP? Right. Uh, so interesting thing that you have mentioned that reading the IBC. Yes. And so, sir, so these are instructions from the AA with regard to meeting him in the jail or any no. other thing. What? No, no. Meeting in the jail, you can meet. Obviously, you can go and meet there. Any decision, I think decision making. I am talking about decision making. Good. If there is any problem, you can discuss. If he is not cooperating, you can approach the AA. See, a person in jail, by definition, he is under restraint and can easily plead the fact that he is in jail for any non-cooperation, and that will be upheld by any court of law. okay remember that you cannot force a person in jail to do something because simple defense will be i am in jail i can't do anything moreover ravi sir moreover also he he says ki i don't have anything everything has been taken by the ed whatever i can do i can tell you verbally obviously obviously first of all he is in jail he is not in his office so he can't give you anything he can at best talk to you second yes uh, records have been seized by some investigative agency so that is another defense to say everything is taken by them i don't have anything so these are very valid arguments what so yes. what do you do if, with this situation then last resort is to approach a yeah. in fact it is not the last resort it ought to be the first resort right okay when the people with who, who have to cooperate with you in some man are either under a restraint like being in jail or are in the nature of an investigative agency which has seized certain records they are not going to listen to you you are nobody to them in an individual capacity so necessarily the only way out would be to approach the nclt with a very specific prayer this is where drafting the ia and asking the prayer becomes so important uh, a lot of judicial time in nclt is wasted because prayers are not clear they are very general and general prayers tend to get overlooked so in such a situation as an example there are two things that the rp wants one sir, certain verbal clarifications because that's all that the person in jail can give from the person who is in jail and copies of the records which are seized by the agency so these are the two specific prayers so uh, an interview with the person in jail which is routed through the jail superintendent right and on what grounds one has to read the requirement of ibc which mandates that people should cooperate and that nclt has the power to ask them to cooperate i mean it is an interpretation of law so that's one way of doing things okay this is of course the jail situation i would assume that most people don't have that problem that's very rare so uh yeah in close companies but <clears throat> Now, just a thought that one would like to ask 
put up before this house that even in a going concern which means operations are ongoing yes the operating people are available there, there are one more, more little thing huh? can i approach double a for the direction to agencies to release the record or give us a copy of the record you can't specifically ask them to release the record because that they, see they have seized it under a law a particular yes. law which is a criminal law right right criminal laws in general stand on a higher footing than civil laws in general okay so you can't ask them to release it but you can definitely ask them to give you a copy correct a photocopy yeah to the extent that you need uh -huh. not everything okay again this is where the prayer being specific is very important if they have right. taken away 200 files and all you require are maybe 50 pages or 100 or 200 pages out of those you must be sure to ask only for that a blanket require uh, request will not get heard if gets heard it will not even be accepted you right So, if, if the financial records, for example, I mean, ultimately RPA's requirement is generally financial records, right? Balance sheet, PL account, uh, maybe ledger extracts, just that. That is 90% of all the record that an RP requires. So, utna Right. Copies of uh, physical records, photocopies, elect or even scanned copies for that matter. Need not be photocopies. Today, uh, the agencies are also highly equipped in-house in terms of facilities available with them. They can give you. You can ask specifically to meet that person, whoever it is. Uh, give a list of the documents that you want after looking at the files if required. And uh, ask copy of that. Right. But problem kya hota hai, whatever cases have happened till now, the general pr prayers that are made by RPs are very blanket. You know, give instruction to ED to release all the records to me. Correct. Won't work. Okay. Uh, yes. The law under which they operate uh, stands yes. usually on a higher footing. Then Correct, sir. Very good. Been, uh, okay. So, this is, of course, the jail situation there, as I said, but uh, look at a situation where the city is a going concern. It is operating. You are able to meet and uh, you know even seek some, some information from the operating people. But those people may have no clue about certain transactions on which you want more detail, which only directors may be aware of. Especially in a private limited now. So even in such cases, that would would that not be a problem where the production manager is available, the sales manager is available, uh, but uh, the directors are not. And every time you ask any of the staff members or officers, they will say that was handled by the director. Anybody face that? Okay, so let us go to the next one. This is a bit tricky. I don't know whether how many of you have faced this problem and be honest about it. You know, understanding the nuances of the business of the cooperated. In fact, managing CD as a going concern probably the most difficult issue is this one. If it's actually in business, okay? Yes, anybody faced a problem with this? Or it was all smooth sailing? No, sir, I have. I'm still selling problem in an EPC construction company, wherein uh, when I took over, there were around 13 contracts which were open. So if I don't finish the contract, the bank guarantee is devolved, no money comes, nothing happens, everything is gone for toss. 
so i was able to close around eight sites eight sites so i uh, took help of the contractors because i don't know anything about contract i don't know anything about epc i don't know anything about engineering so i hired a person who guided me and thereafter uh, with, uh, i closed because i had to do material reconciliation i had to close the site de demobilize the site get noc from the local contractors then only i get the final payment and i get a permission to take out my material but still i have not been able to do for four sites uh, when I, uh, and uh, once i did that contract uh, the party levied ld on me so you have done it late so mai usse 3 crore mang raha hu wo mere se 5 crore mang raha hai it is like that so now i can't do anything and material also because there are local goons next slight area and all that i have given the option but the, they have beaten up the party and they are not allowing him to take back the take the material if i go for police complaint the police doesn't take any complaint bolta nahi hum kuch nahi karenge now i don't know what to do really messy affair yes again uh, this is an extreme case uh, majority of cases this such uh, tricky issues will not be there but so the fact the, is all, all over india pan india from chennai to bhavnagar to navinagar yeah. to jamnagar to anywhere there are multi locational uh, it is like that yes yes very 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 right please said uh, epc business will have such issues yeah. including having project sites in areas which are not uh, easy to operate it uh, which are disturbed in many ways could Correct. be nuxlite issue could be any other issue local contractor issue yes no the best part is that we tell bhel ki sir these are old dues we can't pay as per ibc so bhel says no i don't know anything i'll deduct from your payment and give to you we say under ibc we can't pay old dues they say i don't know ibc as per contractual terms you are supposed to get noc you are not giving noc we'll deduct from your payment and i'll give to you now what do i do sir yes so that is of course slightly different from the nuances of the business per se uh, but in one way it is also related that uh, contracts of infra companies of any nature epc or otherwise they operate on the concept of running bill right or is it they are they operate on the concept of the ra bill yeah yeah uh, ra bill so uh, yes. the old ra bill then whatever work i do again yes. i give ra bill then they again deduct the tds yes. so it is yes. like that uh, so it 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 is not where the transaction comes to an end with one bill and another bill is independent it's no, not no no then see the contract is running over 7 years so i have to do all the material reconciliation of last 7 years and give it to the party so material reconciliation is to be done then all the documents and all the drawings are to be handed over to the party so he is going by the contractual terms which i was not a party to it was signed in 2011 so so it took a lot of time and anyway but still three four sites i am still struggling yes so this is uh, something which almost all epc cases is faced that yeah, yeah. there is no identification or allowed identification or separation between dues on the insolvency commencement date and yeah, due yeah. because they that, say we don't that concept that. doesn't exist in epc business correct correct it is more like waterfall in some manner that jab tak pehla nahi hoga aage ka nahi ha bilkul bilkul yeah it is that problem is there but that's infra okay other than infra understanding the nuances of business is this an issue faced by anybody else any other business uh, non infra anybody from that are you all very comfortable other than that we can understanding the business is not a problem yes anybody please yeah there is not one way ha huh? and no cprs by the way so attendance is important not logging in nothing so everybody is an expert in their businesses from deva would that be the take away sir someone has mentioned bank account issues in the chat box they please speak up we will not be able to read chat box kindly whoever has mentioned that can you please tell what you are talking about
Hello. Arumi, Hello. Sir. Yes, Mr. Arumi. Sir, uh, sometimes what happens is the uh, private limited company, especially if having more than one uh, account, account in uh, the different banks, they may they will not disclose. Uh, they will disclose only to the main account. And is there any possibility to find a way out how many accounts they were holding? So you go to the books of accounts and you can check everything. You see the books of accounts. With sir, the always, account. you know it very. You know it very well. Always books of accounts. They will not give it two to three years. We will not, will not be available to us. See, then you have to update it. You have to update it. Yeah. Uh, have to update. We will come to know the bank account only after some verification with some other records. Some uh, end uh, somewhere some hint will come. Then we will enquire. Then we will say yes, there was a bank account. See, one uh, source of information of bank accounts, not that they, they are 100% reliable, but mostly reliable, would be the auditor. Yeah, absolutely right, sir. Absolutely right. Okay. So, the catch hold of the last auditor, even if it is done two years before, and take the last detailed audit report from them, which gives the data of all the banks. Then check with okay. the bank. Okay. Yeah, so, some... some Sometimes they also do want help. That's see, people don't help is uh, not some uh, that happens all the time. We don't help Sometimes. others all the time. Similarly, they may not help us all the time. That is different. There is no no third party can give you a solution for that. There can be no law. The, the law is there. Not helping, you have 19.2. Go to NCLT. Then, of course, the answer will be: oh, it takes time. Of course, everything takes time. Sorry, and as per law, auditors are under, under compulsion to give the information. That is the law. Implementing yes. it is a different aspect altogether. It might take months and years. Uh, that is not strange to India. Please remember this, that uh, most of us in this profession, IP profession, are new to the way courts work. Most of us. And when they say new to the way, uh, uh, rather I would say new to the way the justice administration system in the country works. It is a broken system. Everything here takes time. Recently, I think it was just two days ago when somebody was, it's a high court case, a person at the age of 82 was awarded a jail sentence of one year for taking a bribe of 100 rupees, 100 rupees 32 years ago. So compared to that, I think in CLT we are far better. Okay. So yeah, right. So oh, bank account, there is, uh, but that is not uh, understood. Uh, one, uh, one second, one second. Uh -huh. I'll come to you. Just a second. The topic on the screen is understanding the nuances of the business of the CD, not traceability of account, bank account A, B. That's at a much lower level. In term. I mean, I'm not saying it's not an important issue, but it's not directly connected with as a going concern because that's a common issue. Whether the company is a going concern or not, it will still be taking custody and control of the assets of the city includes bank accounts. So that issue remains. But that's not the issue on the screen. Okay. We are talking of as an IP. When we enter, take that assignment. Are we facing any problem because we do not understand the business also. We always talk of issues in the outside world. People don't cooperate. Information is not available. How about us? Are we even capable of doing all those assignments? And if not, what are we trying to do about it so that we still are able to deliver performance? Yes, Mr. Patwal, Neel Singhji. Actually, I, my question was on the some session for this bank, but uh, they use a call over the mission says. So that is uh, no problem, uh, not now. Yeah, okay. We will come at the end to other issues too, which are related, but let us first complete those topics which are already 
जैन यू वॉन्टिंग टू से समथिंग या या सर इन वन ऑफ माई अदर ट्रेडिंग कंपनी दैट आई एम आई आर पी I continued the trading business of steel. So, but I had to understand the nuances of steel trading of MS Steel angle channel beam, and I negotiated the parties the rates. And with the I used to supply to the same party who were my debtors who were outstanding. But then too, I gave them a credit of thirty days, and I also got a credit of thirty days. So I was able to do a very handsome turnover and generate uh, uh, amount of due to trading, uh, which almost met my CRP cost. but uh, due to the that was due to the reputation of the promoter involved it is not due to me uh, so but uh, one two places i had booked also and the steel prices went up so there also i made a windfall gain it is like that okay uh, good thing that you acknowledge that uh, it is not just the ips contribution that gets no no yes it is not my contribution absolutely i am mean, very rare for any ip to acknowledge that जो अच्छा हुआ हमारे कारण हुआ और जो बुरा हुआ so the first one was not much of a problem the second one is also not much of a problem let's see if at all at the end of it i think we will have find that we have no problem let's go to the next one okay uh see this is the issue of establishing certain principles and protocols procedures whatever keep the business running uh when the situation is that of a inadequate cash flows okay i presume you understand that that you require uh, let's say 100 for outflows expenses purchase of material etc but you are only able to generate 80 then what do you do is that an issue you know deciding how to ration this money for example or what else what any other method how do you prioritize something what principles can be laid down can it anything at all be done or just first in first out principle or any other what type of thing that one would like so is this again the question is is this an issue how to decide mm -hmm. allocation of resources in a shortage situation resources being basically cash yeah this is a issue cash flow mismatch is always a issue so we try and put the priority payments for the current supplies so that they go on supplying us and we request debtors to make a early payment it is like that because we have to meet crp expenses also on so both uh, things we have to see or uh, try to defer salary of the staff it is like that so we have to do uh, financial engineering to be frank enough so that we meet all the ends Yes, this has anybody faced problems here? Any yeah, type? Yeah, I have faced. Problems? I have faced problems, sir. I have faced. No problems. problem other than the fact that there is a shortage, but huh. other than that, any specific? Uh, I'm just asking other people also, since so many have are logged in, but hardly anybody. Nobody has. has that means nobody has faced problem. Ha! Huh, we can conclude that that nobody has hmm. problems. and then at the end we will conclude that other than two three people everybody is doing crp excellent correct koi kisi ko koi problem nahi hai sir actually mein everybody has problems see we are professionals cs cma ca okay fine we are expert we are we have thorough knowledge but as such industry is concerned everyone faces problem that is that ki most of the cases in which start irp or rp is being appointed are closed cases that means no business operation is going on even if it is not not a closed case running an industry company is really i mean uh... 
yeah so what are the types of challenges this is actually uh, what we are trying to you know share with each other that uh, let's say if you are a cs by practice and you are faced with a, a construction uh, a company as the cd uh, which is uh, let's say that actually it is an ongoing the uh, construction is going on it's not completely closed uh, what type of challenges would you face and uh, have you been able to overcome all of them what are those which still do not have a solution uh, some of them may be operational but are some of them related to the inherent restrictions of the code itself okay and whether some so we have to finally look to that at the end of the day because uh, neither the ipa nor ibbi is going to come and teach us how to manage businesses but definitely they can help if it is related to any uh, aspect of the code or regulations especially procedural okay so uh, in my case i actually am there has been a lot of litigation tax litigation has been going on and actually during my tenure itself there has been lots of demands has been raised they are coming okay. the... we 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 have a, i have put that as a separate issue by itself we will come to the litigation part right okay. now we are talking of you know cash flow mismatch how does that create a problem if any for businesses managing the city as a going concern okay so not getting anything different so let's go to the next one and uh, okay control now one of the things that we are taught in ibc from day one is take control and custody take possession uh, and one hears that in general a lot of people say uh, i have taken control of this i have taken control of that and uh, what one the, sometimes there is a problem with is what is what do you mean by control uh, when you say that uh, irp or rp has taken control and how much control is good vis-a-vis allowing the business to continue maybe with certain existing practices uh, let me give an example where let us say the rp says nothing from today will happen without my approval now imagine what would happen what would be the reaction of people uh, okay how will they respond and how will the rp get into a problem or will the rp be able to still manage it what are the resources that the rp has to take complete control the infrastructure and the skill set you know which the rp has is does this require a balance you know between control the need to take control and the need to be responsive to operational requirements my view is that if the company is going concern if we directly take the control then it may hamper the regular business of the company so uh, the initially the bank uh, bank account control is that is uh, initially we envisage but the operational control can we left to the management or we have to appoint professionals to see the monitoring part and then take the in charge take the charge what do you say yeah uh... we have touched a few important points yes anybody wants to add modify disagree no in my case i appointed all the ex persons who were working with the corporate debtor because they were handling the particular sites so i appointed them as a professional and uh, uh, toned down their salary and uh, they agreed to work and uh, help me in the Uh, closure of the contract so for all meetings i used to take them uh, also with me though technically it was all technical discussion but i used to get a, when i did site closure also when i 
I was supposed to do a content, but I did site closer upfront as I was unable to do it. It is like that. So I used to, I hired the technical person, and they assisted me in uh, doing the work. So that's how you fill up the resource or skill set gap. Yeah, yeah. You can rely on uh, by way of appointing professionals, either who are worked with the company before or from any other Anybody. company. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wherever such skill set is available yes that is one way of balancing the control with the responsiveness yes but how much should one even think of control because we do hear this right a lot of rps keep saying uh, that uh, i'm not able to take control the promoter is not giving me control or whoever directors are not giving. but without many times being able to define what control means and what it ought to be. See, all the business should be run by us and uh, the, uh, all the financial activities should be carried by us only. Yeah. And all the key personnel should report to me. It is like that. So that is a, anyway one circular and that part gets done, right? They will report to you because they can't report to the existing board anyway. That Correct. gets suspended. Mm -hmm. So that the law has provided you till that. It has taken you to the water. But mm -hmm. the law can't make you drink. Yeah, yeah. In one of the fa factories, once I once, first day I went, the laborers uh, tires to puncher kar diya because their bills were not paid. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Anything anybody wants to add? Okay. Fine. But I think appointing a person and having the resources with the fund available, how can we manage the things? No? The, if the funds are not available properly to appoint professional, take control, or sometimes lose the take, existing management taking help is also sometimes good or not. That depend on the situation. See, existing management uh, also is something which one needs to define. Uh, in a majority of cases, not all, okay, majority of cases, if management is defined as the existing owners in some form or the other, the promoters or directors, uh, not all of them are technical. They are like more commercial people. So the technical resource or uh, when I say technical, it's not just engineering, but the accountant is usually somebody else. Uh, the HR person is somebody else. It's, the directors usually don't do these jobs, right? Uh, unless it's a very small entity, in which case owner-promoter may be doing many jobs. So uh, the thing that you raised indirectly is how much can you rely or to what extent you should rely on taking the assistance of the existing management, promoters, directors, whatever name you call them. So what, what do people think? How much should you rely? Mm, so my question is here related to this. Haji, bully. Uh, maybe, maybe because when you are going to the corporate director for control, purpose, you know that there is a financial guide and the operation guide is there. So sometimes he is not willing to fully cooperate with you. So in such a situation, because you don't, uh, because you have the belief that this person, follow shadow person, will not uh, give me the adequate information, or it will not fulfill my, or you know, kind of my controlling perspective. So can I remove this and uh, through the HR, and I can appoint this person in company payroll. So then I want the one person in the finance and one person in uh, operation. Uh, see, whatever RP does, it includes uh, hiring, okay, or firing, because all the powers of the board are now with the RP, and the board has such powers anyway to hire somebody or to remove somebody. There is only a restriction that in, when it comes to uh, a certain level, it, the, it's not defined, but the court does say that uh, it requires uh, the approval of the uh, COC under section 28. Okay, terms of employment of certain key ma managerial personnel, etc., will not be changed by the RP without the approval of the COC, which means that for others you can. 
So question is, yes, uh, you can appoint people. That's not restricted. Uh, but if you are going to pay the existing person and appoint somebody else to replace that person because you don't trust that person or is the so-and-so is not cooperating and you still need that resource. Uh, that is an issue that you will have to tackle in what manner because the law of the land cannot be violated. You cannot remove a person from employment except in accordance with the law as applicable. That would mean the contract, if any, between the employer, the company, and that person. Uh, any statutory protection under any law, for example, Workers Act, okay, Industrial Disputes Act, uh, and uh, you know anything else that could affect your uh, actions. But broadly, these two, okay, the contract and any law which protects such employment, that has to be adhered to. That cannot be given go by. And uh, so it's a very fine balancing act. And uh, replacement of every person or because such person doesn't uh, cooperate or at least the perception is that, that such person is not cooperating is the easy way out, right? Anybody can do that. Why would it require a highly qualified person as an like an IP uh, to just give dismissal orders. So that cannot be the default solution. That can be an exception. Yes, Sujata. Yeah, uh, my uh, only experience is that one has to be very cautious with the uh, people who are already on roll because uh, there is an entire cycle in the sense that firstly uh, they do not uh, their loyalties are with the erstwhile promoters and uh, often they will uh, misguide and uh, mislead the rp okay. and uh, at various forum i have requested that a kind of uh, you know, uh, database if it can be built of professionals from various industries because uh, what happens that for a short term engagement of say six to nine months people are not interested however if a kind of a uh, you know database can be built and people would then have some kind of assurance that uh, okay process after process they would be you know uh, kind of engaged, especially those who have just retired and would want to offer their services. They would also get, uh, you know, used to the uh, process of uh, the CIRP process, etc. It would be uh, a very uh, useful thing for all our IPs. Yeah, access to resources quickly. And by getting themselves in that panel, those people have already consented to the situation of a temporary employer. Yeah. Okay. Plus, uh, plus, you know, things like clash of interest or uh, any kind of uh, hidden uh, expenses, etc., do not uh, surface. Uh, even the RP would be, you know, assured of getting uh, a kind of uh, vetted uh, profiles. Uh, I, from I the think, data yes, yes, while, while your thought is very laudable, <laughs> uh, let's be honest, it cannot happen. Nobody can see this vetting that we talk of. I, the selection of IPs also is a significantly significant process where vetting does take place, right? A lot of documentation, etc., to be submitted, uh, uh, sure, yes. go through the exam to pass it, all that. And uh, we do know that uh, in terms of performance, uh, it's not that great as it should be. It's not hundred percent. It's far, far less than that. Agreed, sir. But at least it would be a, you know, I mean, a base where you can access and hope to get a, a person who can help out uh, technically in that particular industry. It will be like a decent, decent uh, what you call, list uh, of services available. To the extent that the people who have put their name, they have done it by consent. That means you know. Yes. These people are ready to take up a short-term assignment. That Otherwise, it becomes very that. difficult to identify uh, people who know about that particular industry. 
this could uh, you know uh, kind of uh, be available to the ips to tap the resource yes uh, we just have to think which who is best suited to do this or can it be more than one agency or more than one platform where such uh, resources are available yeah sir please sir sir my question uh, was remaining uh, i said ki that ki you know you have to be many so many things in a company so then you have to be some dedication person should be there so for the controlling for controlling perspective like in financial or operations so then instead of we can uh, rt can also do this uh, appoint any person in the company letter head ki then he is a permanent employee and uh, like that ki then we can manage the control or otherwise we have to be so that we appointed this person or in our kind of major professionals like on your visit appointed person or only only no if you are asking the question can, does the rp have the power to appoint people for the operations side of the uh, process the answer is yes the rp has the power but all such no, no, no. powers are no. subject to approval by coc because they form part of crp i have to be i have to be you know appointed the person in a company payroll not like this this is yes, yes. the role here the, the thing is that if you are appointing a perm employee as a permanent payroll right then you have to be very sure that it is an existing vacancy and it is necessary to fill it up and the only way to fill it up is by way of a permanent employee you have to be sure of that and if you can justify that uh, technically there is no bar there is no but bar coc permission but coc will be very hesitant and rightly so that because effectively you are burdening uh, the ra who will come in with an employee which you may not be up you know uh, what do you call uh, completely capable no, no, of actually, yes 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 my yeah, see the competence of the ip are, to select the right person i can i can is also a I problem can, ah. i can replace i can replace the person who is existing employee and i want to replace them though if you are talking of removing somebody and replacing it or are you talking of filling up a vacancy uh both 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 okay both will have different challenges filling up a vacancy again you have to justify that it is required uh, and justify to the to yourself first ke khud ko to apne ko confidence hona chahiye ke ha yes this is definitely required i have done my analysis and my study and this position needs to be filled up that is the stage one second stage is the same convincing the coc that it requires to be done now obviously it's a question of what level like if you are replacing a driver of a forklift truck for example it's a what do you call a low financial outlay position and maybe not much you know convincing would be required but if you have to replace say the company secretary classic case okay which is relevant to all of you company secretary resigns or has just left before crp started or even just after and you are a listed company and uh, the law says that you need to have a full time company secretary should you at that time spend your energy on appointing a new cs or find another solution which does the job but without a long term liability and at a much lower cost so ye yeah, managerial decision okay this is not a legal decision this is manage you and it will depend on the facts and circumstances at that time but the default answer would be if you can defer a cost do so do not add long term liabilities liabilities which are of a recurring nature and for a longer period of time when you are the rp try to limit it to Sorry, short it is it is subject to disclosure ha ah, sorry it is subject to disclosure when you are disclosing how much people we have appointed and like that in our the profession side it has to be uh, disclosed to us you see anyway and uh, no, no, uh, not just disclosed but approved 
and if these are so KMPs, then I, if the positions that you are Anil Singh ji, sunye, sunye, sunye. Okay, puri baat sunye. If the people that you want to appoint are classified as KMP, then they have to be disclosed both to ROC and to SEBI if you are a listed company. So, ye to hai Not uh, SEBI, BSC, stock exchanges. Okay, so disclosures are apni jagah pe. But before disclosure comes the assessment of the need and a conclusion that other than a permanent appointment, nothing else can be done. That is what you will be questioned. You know, you should be prepared for that, that you are able to justify what you did. Okay. Okay, next point we are talking of. See, there are procedural requirements that need to be met both as under CIRP, under various laws which are applicable to the corporate debtor. The RP is required to comply with all laws. Okay, that's what the court says. And then there are certain substantive necessities sometimes that come up. And one easy example, I will refer back to what uh, I think it was Mr. Atul Jain was saying it, that in the case of uh, EPC companies, uh, the procedural law is very clear. You cannot make payment of amounts which are due and claim, uh, are claimable as an insolvency commencement date. But on the ground, it is impossible to do so. So this is the issue of how do you balance this two. Okay, there are no easy answers to this, but this is a huge issue. Uh, EPC companies definitely but also in other uh, type of companies where a prior payment necessarily has to be made. Otherwise, your operations will not go forward. Basically, you will not be able to operate as a going concern. Okay. Uh, We'll just move forward and then I'll just open it up for any uh, general questions that might come up. Okay, there is the issue of managing the supply chain at both ends. Uh, that is at the input end, uh, ensuring that the existing suppliers continue with their supply or finding new suppliers who are able to give the same input raw materials or services. And the other output side is that your customers stay with you. Some people run away because they say, okay, we can't rely on you. You are insolvent. We don't know whether you will be able to meet our delivery sh schedules. So, so this is a, another going concern issue that comes up that how do you manage the supply chain and what, what, what are the things that you can do and sometimes there are things that you cannot do. Then dealing with statutory authorities, we all know this income tax, GST. Yeah, somebody yes, is saying yes. something. Yes. Yes, bully. No, the supply chain you are saying, though, in one of my cases, we have given some cranes on rent to Reliance. So the moment they came to know that the company is in insolvency, they stopped the crane hire. So I met the president of Reliance and told that till that time I don't dispose of, please keep the cranes on hire. So the moment I'll give you a 30 days notice, and then you can remove from higher. So in fact, he appreciated that you are the one of the first uh, IRP who has come and met us and requested us to keep uh, as a going concern. And they kept, till the time I gave a notice of auction, they kept that as a, so we have to go and meet the customers also. In fact, I have been MD of many PSUs where our funds are blocked. So we had uh, met, uh, seek appointment of MDs and met them also. Yeah. So unless you do, nothing happens to this ring enough. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, similar is dealing with statutory authorities. Yeah, uh, again, PF also, I've got a very typical case uh, where I have paid all the PF dues of past. I have paid interest also of the past. Now the PF authorities have taken me for the panel portion in NCLT that this is also payable. Yes. The case is lying in the NCLT. I don't know what is your uh, say on this. Yeah. Once, just give me a second. Yes. Yeah. 
अब दूसरा ये तो वही हो गया कि आपने उनका पैसा दिखा दिया वो कहते हैं पैसा तो इनसे मिल ही जाएगा सर नहीं हम नहीं वो उसमें सर क्या लिखा है कि जो एम्प्लॉय को जाएगा वो देंगे तो जो ड्यूज है वो हमने दे दिया इंटरेस्ट भी उनको जाएगा लेकिन जो पेनल जो पेनल्टी है वो तो पी डिपार्टमेंट को जाएगा तो इसलिए हमने नहीं दिया इट इज लाइक दैट पेनल्टी वोट गो टू एम्प्लॉज इट इज लाइक दैट I took a legal opinion and I did not pay. Now they have taken me to NCLT. So my dissolution yes. is pending. They have taken me to NCLT, but now my dissolution is pending now because of this this head up. Look, they are saying what they are saying. Yeah, what you have raised is an issue which is still to be decided. Uh, let's wait for what the judiciary uh, says mm -hmm. on this issue. There are certain cases where. Uh, yeah, Savan Goli wala. Savan Goli. सावन गोटिया वाला वॉज ऑन ग्रेचुएटी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सो इट है डिफरेंट एंड डेल्ट विद डिफरेंटी प्लेसेस ऑल दिस अंडर एज बियॉन्ड यू नो अब एवरीथिंग इट कवर सेवन ए सेवन क्यू एंड फोर्टीन डी फोर्टीन तीनों कवर होता है उसमें Okay. and that is what was upheld by enclat in uh, uh, i think kushal paper case or something you know yeah that, kushal paper case kushal paper case yeah and similarly in uh, jetels hmm. okay without distinguish between the two but what approach that you have taken actually distinguishes because uh, you are trying to say that the protection of the pf act is not for dues to the trust but yeah. of dues to the people beneficiaries of the trust so you are distinguishing between administrative costs or related yeah, yeah. to and the even in claim i did not pass that claim in fact i, know, I did not pass the claim so of claim the... passing is something different i think we will not get into no. that but if the claim is valid under law it has to be admitted where yeah. does it fall under 53 is a separate question Now, so, what about rainbow sir? Now we are getting notices from Gujarat GST also. Yeah, our Gujarat VAT. What about our dues and all that? And legally, I don't know. See, rainbow. I mean, this is my honest opinion from day one. I mean, I have yeah. not had a doubt even for a minute that firstly, rainbow has not enunciated any new law, mm -hmm. nor an interpretation of an existing law. Nothing. It has not happened. rainbow has just said what is already there that these are secured creditors yes they are when okay and for the last 5 5 and a half 6 years of ibc i think i remember at least talking three four times in different forums you please remember that certain dues are secured by operation of law and they are also secured creditors now where do they fall 53 1b or somewhere below we that's a different security secure then does it fall in the top level because the secured creditor term as used in ibc and as was used in companies act earlier remember this it is not a new term does not distinguish between any type of creditors anybody with a security interest is a secured creditor that's it could be a financial creditor could be an operational creditor could be an employee could be the government it doesn't matter okay so that people are not understanding that that is by intention it is not a drafting error all oh. over the world in every insolvency law secured creditor is a secured creditor there is no further classification done financial hai operational hai kala hai gora hai nata hai no that's not done at that stage because that is under liquidation and otherwise it will be taking away the inherent right of a secured creditor the whole contract law will of the country will disappear it will no longer be a democracy okay so the basis of lending and commercial transaction where security interest is involved that will vanish so so that is never been the intention of any insolvency now coming so what to we have done sir rainbow say yeah. rainbow said gujarat vat act says vat dues are secured yes, yes. so so does the um, maharashtra uh, vat act so does gst so does customs act oh, oh. so does uh, the karnataka 
municipal every state vat act says so forget vat vat to purana ho gaya gst mein to wahi kaha hai and so does the customs act customs dues are also secured only dues government dues which are not secured actually specifically and directly are income tax and there is a reason for that it is again not an oversight because income tax is a derivation of an assessment of income where it's a process it's not directly levied on a transaction all others are based on transactions income tax is different it is based on your income with all the exemptions and you know all those things all that have to be taken into account carry forward loss kitne sare cheez hote hain it's not something but anybody can arrive at and say ye hai kar so the determination of the amount final amount due under income tax act can go to years also at some time decades that's not the case with gst in mm -hmm. almost all cases it's straight away this transaction have to kitna tax bharna Sir, I believe that GST or two, there has been cases where of demand, issues demand notices, and it is under. One second, I will come to all that. I will come to all that. Okay. So the Rainbow Paper Judgment dealing with secured creditor is not new law, nor even a declaration of new law. So what is the issue? Actually, there is no issue, but we like to create issues. जहाँ कुछ भी नहीं हम आग पैदा कर देंगे. so we have created it we mean this is the entire system of people who have basically been too lazy to read and understand the law create all these problems okay there are certain remarks in the rainbow paper judgment which can be misconstrued to mean something other than what the law says but those have not been in the form of directions they are in the form of obiter okay remarks from the bench obiter dicta they are not binding they are by the way okay so what is the binding portion of that rainbow judgment where dues are secured creditor theek hai but something else is missed in that judgment because it was never before the bench an issue which is not brought before a judicial forum the bench is not obligated to comment upon it or rule upon it. so in this case that was not 531 e was not before the bench and nobody mentioned it and because this was uh, rainbow was already in insolvency the company which had uh, uh, which became the successful resolution applicant itself uh, was under uh, was withdrawing from that so there was no representation and even if there had been i very much doubt if anybody would have done it the way it ought to have been so there is this concept of those who are familiar with customs and excise classification of goods you know which rate will be applicable to a particular type of uh, product if there is a possibility of that product being classified in two different classification okay so there is suppose let us say motors has got uh, 12% duty and of outboard motors for use uh, in uh, you know on a boat has got 20% duty i can very well say that's also motor i'll pay 12 i won't be wrong but i'll be partially right it will not be a complete classification if there is a special entry it always overrides a general entry so 531 a b whatever that at the top the word secured creditor is a general entry it's not classifying or specifying what type of credit but when you come down read down below there is a specific entry which says government dues and it does not clog in security all government dues. when nothing is mentioned it means all so 531 e will override the general entry of secured creditor that's it there was no problem koi fasari nahi thi this all created but happens इंडिया है ये सब चीजें होती है ओके सो सो दैट इज व्हाट इज़ ऑल अबाउट या इट विल टेक टाइम 
So if it is the department which comes under the Ministry of Finance, till the Ministry of Finance says, yeah, it's not here, all of they will keep challenging. You will find that two different departments of government fight each other on some, some issues. Look at uh, 32A itself in Bhushan case. It is challenging what uh, has already been held to be different. So, yeah, somebody was talking about demand notice. Yes, sir. Uh, I was talking yes. about what sir. is a what do you understand by the term demand notice? That Be very technical the... and clear, huh? not no general uh, words. I think what demand, demand? demand notice. I was talking about that. It has been issued on assessment. That means ki on the basis of assumptions, demand notice has been issued to, to the city. So what and is wrong with the demand notice being issued during CIRP? What's wrong? Actually, it was be before the CIRP and they submitted the a claim. So before the COVID, the problem is demand notice. But, uh, but CD has gone for appeal. It is and under... So, so, I think it is a problem. The CD has disputed all his dues from day one. He says, I don't have to give it to the bank, I don't have to give it to the supplier. He says, what will happen with that? Is there a stay order? No, there is no stay order. On that higher forum? Then it is an admissible claim. How it shall be treated at the end? See, you cannot, as an RP, prejudge what the court will say in appeal. You have no right. The law is what is last order. So the authority which is issuing the demand notice has the right to issue it. That is the law till it is modified or overturned by a higher authority. Okay. Yeah, no, you can't, you can't decide and assume ki because it has gone in appeal, it will come in the favor of the city. How can you assume? But no, I'm not assuming that ki it will be nullify so or it is an admissible claim except that it is litigated it is challenged it is admissible but challenge challenging is a qualification that is information for the uh what do you call the ra if it is under crp okay, these are right. claims and these are these are the challenges at which they are so it is for them to address it in appropriate manner in the resolution plan it is okay. not for the rp but the problem is that due to that i I am unable to get any resolution plan. You don't know that. That because it is of that. Okay, make no such assumption. If your liquidation value is usually is the case, leave nothing to uh, government dues anyway. So what is that that issue? Ki wo paach, paachas karod ka demand ho ya paachajar karod ka? Makes no difference, no? Right. So see, these are assumptions people make. Are because of this. No, nothing. You look, think like a businessman. A businessman is not bothered about it. He looks at the law and says, law allows me not to pay this okay. right. because I'm not duty bound. As long as I explicitly address it in my resolution plan. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So we'll now quickly run through the rest. Though there are issues of dealing with employees. We have touched upon some of them, uh, cooperation, etc. But payments, past payments also is a big issue, especially when it comes to employees who are drawing salaries which are on the lower side. Okay, They would not have savings to take them through. Then compliance and big deal. This is, this is an issue which I think every RP faces that can the RP actually be in a position to do all the compliances required under various acts? You know, there is Companies Act, there is SEBI, if it's a listed co company, there will be pollution control, there will be um, uh, explosives uh, rules, if that is the business of the CD. And then, of course, there are the compliances uh, specific to the RP, which are IBC related. You know, what the code or the regulations require the RP to do. So these are issues. And these are, of course, issues even if the company is not operating, many of them. And then management of litigation. We are talking about non-CRP litigation at this stage. So against the CD, 
by various parties like uh, could be income tax gst whatever tax related government dues recovery suits uh, arbitration proceedings uh, cases filed by uh, people like the factory inspector or the explosive inspector or uh, the authority under the essential uh, commodities act depending on you know the business of the city it could be many types of litigations against the city there will be cases filed by the city and these all need to be addressed and not all of them can be reduced to claims if it is against the city it may not necessarily be in financial terms it could be cases relating to damages compensation you know breach of contract things like that or which have a penal flavor where certain uh, compliance has not been done by the co company in the past and which might lead to some sort of penalty or uh, even imprisonment in certain uh, you know statutes then of course crp related litigation or liquidation these are we all know we face them every day so they are they take away a lot of time and resources so to that extent there are a huge uh, challenge and also because many times uh, rps and liquidators tend to i you know go for litigation or create litigation when it need not be there okay so that finishes the presentation part and uh, whatever issues that i had listed out anything else anybody wants to raise please do so uh, good evening sir yes boli sir this is anuradha bisani here yes yes yeah uh, sir see there is a case in my uh, liquidation case wherein i was appointed as a liquidator very recently but the erstwhile liquidator had appointed one of the employees existing employees again as an employee in uh, during the liquidation period okay yes. so now uh, day before yesterday uh, his term got over so now he is claiming the leave and cashments as per the hr policy which was there in the company okay so is he entitled to it sir i mean am i supposed to pay make that payment to him leave and cashment for which period for the period in which he served during the liquidation period so during liquidation was he issued a separate appointment or it was a continuation of the previous appointment no appointment letter was issued but not uh, uh, you know in as many words that he is entitled for leave and cashment his salary was this fixed this is this is, is an issue okay this is not a legal issue i mean this is not by law this is a contract <laughs> based on facts so okay, it is so up to what exactly the words that the contract or the appointment letter says which will determine whether such a thing is payable or not so one cannot make a general observation here okay sir i'll get in touch with you sir yeah anything else anybody wants to say okay i think that probably concludes this session the only thing i just want to know that the as a, as a ip is uh, due to the, the, the need to the various compliances and also has to manage the business and also has to do so other things also so is it better to uh, have a help up each time the every professional some the different different side so that the compliance burden will be less or the the uh, as they say that i will have to take ip help or some professionals depend on the assignments sir or we the, the answer to the question depends on two facts factors one is the competence skill set experience and resources available with the ip okay in house whatever and it could be just individual somebody who knows certain things knows it okay so if you think that you know all these things and can manage it yourself fine so that is one set of facts 
and uh, the other is of course cost because every hiring adds cost do you have the money to pay and but when you when i say do you have the money to pay it is not just money that is in the bank account today or likely to come mm -hmm. but also the fact that such appointment needs to be approved mm -hmm. this is not a mandatory requirement remember mm -hmm. this all yeah. assistance to the rp mm -hmm. is at the ultimately to be approved in terms of its cost by the coc yeah. or SRC. now if it is liquidation mm -hmm. so see you you are not taking when you say take control of the bank account of the corporate debtor you are not taking control of the uh, or you are not taking over the ownership of the money in that remember mm -hmm. that it yes. is an account held in trust so yeah. to that extent you can only spend that money which is essential and which is approved so uh, in the various NCLT uh, structure remarks, they say that uh, IP needs to be trained properly, something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, IP uh, do need to be trained properly. It is not a structure mm -hmm. or a remark. It is a fact mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. Majority of IPs do have issues with managing businesses. Okay, yes. because mm -hmm. majority of them have never had industrial or corporate experience. Mm -hmm. And so, do, doing audit is not corporate experience, by the way. Yeah, that is what, uh, and we see us only dealing with compliance but not managing in the past. That is the problem. Mm. Yeah, because management of a company is a twenty-four by seven job sometimes. Yes, yes and yes. you will come with uh, with. I mean, there will be a situation brought to you where you have to give a decision, mm. and whatever you do, somebody is going to be dismissed. I say situation homework, and how do you deal with that? Okay, that's an experience by itself. It can't be obtained just by reading books. Or just uh, you know, taking a twenty questions type of thing. It is something that one needs to work on. Okay. Thank you. Right. right. Thank you. Yes, Nitika, over to you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. But firstly, I would like to request all the attendees to kindly participate more actively because the purpose of this program is to have the interaction to and fro. This is not a webinar sort of a thing where the speaker will speak and you will all listen. It is just an informal interaction platform which we have provided to all the participants. And the purpose was to have the suggestions from all the insolvency professionals through which we can issue, we can give representations to the authorities. So kindly participate more actively and you can give the suggestions also the topics on which you want to have the interactive sessions. That's it. And thank you so much, Ravi Prakash, sir, for your patience and for leading the session nicely. Thank you so much, sir. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nikita.